they asked me to talk for a few minutes about the future that I'm imagining after 10 years of doing this convening. Uh, we started SOCAP to subvert the dominant paradigm of two-pocket thinking, invest for financial return for myself with the right to only be selfish and gather as much as you can into your own storehouse and then give some portion to do good, uh, you know, maybe to compensate for what your investments did in the world. We've done okay with that part of uh, that. People now think this impact investing, investing to do good thing is real and big and growing. As, as you can say, it's, it's scaling and it's also got a spiritual aspect that you can't ignore. But we haven't yet changed the rules to make business account for the harm it does or for its externalities. And I think a lot of the rules of the system need to be changed as we start looking at things. We're doing great startups doing new things within a system that is messed up. We need to work on that. Uh, we, have, we have to move to true cost accounting, and the two big problems I think uh, that, are, that we're facing could help with that. The risks in front of us are clear. I think we have two things to worry about. Climate change and the systemic risk of escalating wealth inequality. The have-nots don't put up with that shit for long. That's just how it is. <clears throat> the two problems are linked. Climate change affects people down the hill in places that flood before it does the gated communities up the hill. But the solutions are linked, too. Superstorm Sandy, if you remember that, we've had several disasters since then, it was so strong because the West African mangroves were cut down, letting the seasonal typhoon come out hotter and stronger. So if you care about lower Manhattan, we should be planting mangroves in Liberia and Ghana. Uh, we should probably do some crowdfunding at Zabar's on that. The UNEP, Environmental Program, says the best thing that could be done in coastal areas is to restore indigenous landscape management planting mangroves and other buffer reeds and plants that used to exist on the Gulf Coast, for example. The storms are going to be better, or harder, bigger. We need the things that used to be there to, to mitigate the storms, uh, the storms might. On land, reforestation at scale is the best response to sequest sequester carbon at scale. Everyone agrees that that's true. But again, that means growing trees that often have non-wood forest products that take 10 years and other crops so that indigenous people in the developing world, which is where we can plant trees at that scale, can create livelihoods that help cause them to maintain those trees and then live from the, fr the fruits of those trees. But that's 10-year capital, and we need a new kind of capital that can take 10 years. Investors don't buy 10-year deals. So we're working just with a pilot project with Self-Help Credit Union in Asheville uh, to do that through a kids-led CD that could give them a revenue share of, let's say, the pine resin from Mexico in a pro project like Ajito Verde when they're about to graduate, or chestnut projects that a U.S. group is doing that also take 10 years to come to fruition, or moringa trees from green ventures in Nigeria. We're calling this, uh, in our little pilot, there'll be riparian justice scouts. And our pilot will be with a green-focused public middle school environmental science class that's done a watershed improvement project at the school in Asheville so they have the analytical tools, their environmental science teacher thinks, to understand the importance of reforestation. And there are hundreds of those schools in a network across the U.S. to work with. And the, the thing, if we succeed, which is, you know, who knows, it's iffy, but if we succeed, uh, they will have the most valuable part of the capital stack, the long-term money that gets the deal done. So fourth graders will be being pitched by investment bankers to come into their re regenerative forestry deals. So that's, we'll change the power dynamics just a little bit. We're not sure if we can pull it off, but our last project with self-help is working. More broadly, broadly to, to make agroforestry work at scale, we need new lenses. Environmentally focused investors do not know how to calculate the value of indigenous wealth that is needed to make the projects work and its importance to the trees that they care about. Similarly, socially focused investors don't know how to evaluate an environmental deal that creates that wealth. Several of us think a new framing of regenerative economy beyond sustainability can heal the binocular vision uh, with a lens that lets you evaluate holistic deals that create environmental and social wealth together. Back to self-help. The friends and family funding for entrepreneurs who don't have a rich uncle CD we sold last year with self-help uh, under the runway prop brand to mostly African-American entrepreneurs went out the door finally yesterday to entrepreneurs from Uptima Business Boot Camp working with Impact Hub Oakland and we're looking to replicate that with Mortar and Derek Brazil in Cincinnati and the cities he's expanding to and he's being asked to come into and we want to make it available.
to the other world-class new breed of lean startup meets small business administration accelerators in a network that we're part of. We raised 450,000 from folks at SOCAP last year, but we had 5 million people in demand from investors you know, who were in this room, and we didn't have the capacity to handle it. So we've had to create a virtual rich uncle, this is what the, what the CD is about, in a new financial product that goes below where CDFIs operate because of the racial wealth gap. African American families have 13,000 in family assets and whites around 160,000. So you can't get to the 20,000 that the SBA says you need from your network for a friends and family stage startup. We structured a vehicle where you make money and do good risk free for those top accelerators working in a city's ecosystem that can be replicated. By next year, we hope to be able to handle the demand from investors who want to invest in creating community wealth in their cities and towns. The area of community wealth, the new players are just learning to play with existing players like CDFIs and others, and it's where uh, what we now call impact investing was in 2007, the year before SOCAP, when Catherine Fulton's monitor report said there was uncoordinated innovation that people were solving the same problem who didn't know who else was solving it somewhere else and they're doing the same thing. So a convening was needed. We, we're creating a learning network to solve that because there's not that many of them. More broadly, if you're not investing in wealth creation through entrepreneurship at the neighborhood level, businesses moving out of the kitchen or garage to a storefront and from one to three employees in your city or town, the place where you live is not only poor but less safe. Investing to solve the racial wealth gap is in everybody's best interests. If you want peace, invest in justice. Thank you.